<laughs> oh god, the worst thing you could ever do in a helmet is sneeze. And now that I've done it once, I'm gonna do it more than once. Oh god, the horrors! Oh, I am so sniffly right now. My nose is just mildly running and my left nostril itches. Ah! It's gonna be the worst day ever. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Uh, they're swallowing snot, people. It's terrible. Ow, what is going on, YouTube? One of the x -ray. I'm here. Oh, man. So, earlier this week, Ducati did the world premiere event for the 2020 lineup. And, uh, you know, naturally, I was doing homework. And right about 3 o'clock, in the morning when I finished everything, I decided to watch a little bit of it. And uh, we'll go over some of the little takeaways and interesting things that uh, are things that I like about what's coming out, things I don't like what's coming out. <laughs> I just took over my words because this woman has gone this entire time without looking up. Still not looking up. Anyways, <laughs> you know, what are my takeaways from it? So they start to premiere off with their bicycle. Uh, <laughs> I don't know road bikes, bicycles like that, or mountain bikes are really, what, <laughs> really anything about them, other than when I was a kid I had a hobby. You know, it's, that's all I know about them. My impression though is you're paying for the name, which I mean you mo do most of the time for a bike, but you also get that motor. Uh, but for the bicycle, I feel like if you're in that market, there are tons of other manufacturers out there that will make a better bike for that price or even a better bike at cheaper. So <laughs> unless you're hard on just for Ducatis, um, yeah, I don't, I don't see the point in it, in owning one. <laughs> That's just me. Uh, then they went to that they're multi stratas so I think they had some other bikes in between, but the ones that caught my eye were the multi strata 1260. Uh, that thing in the gray and black satin or matte, whatever they call it, is fucking gorgeous. Uh, I love how that bike looks. You know, I've, I've ridden one a while ago, well, not even a while ago, I rode one earlier this year actually, and I was blown away by it, by the power, by how comfortable it was. You know, by the maneuverability of it. What are you doing? What are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? Come on. I was impressed by it, all of it. And just the more electronics that they add to it, the more creature comforts they actually add to it, uh, the cooler the bike is, the more versatile it is, more places you can take it and those of you that are looking for an adventure style motorcycle I would highly consider one of those you know then they went on to the new V2 the whole advertising is don't call it a 959 it's a V2 yeah it's still 959 pretty much they changed the chassis up a little bit they gave it to Panigale the new Panigale body panels and styling Cool. You know, it's uh, as much as I love how the Panigales have looked from the 11 and 1299s, evolution is necessary and they look better. I, I still wish they do something with the headlights because they are useless. Those headlights uh, the style and the way that they're sucked back in that front area, uh, they're just terrible. They don't work. <laughs> I don't like riding this bike at night. It's hard to see. But, you know, for the price that that thing is, or is going to be, it's still, you know, a, a really good package altogether. And it's got the upgraded Evo electronics and stuff like that on it. So it, it's going to be a better riding bike. The 959s, I don't know, I've always been hesitant to them because I got the twitchiness that the 1199s had and uh, just 
it, they didn't have the power. So you, it came with all the things you didn't like about the 1199 and then gave it less power. And to me, I didn't like it as a road bike. As a track bike, I've heard uh, nothing but great things about it. One of the riders that uh, I know that used to be a racer, he absolutely loves the bike. Uh, for the track though, mind you, because that's you know, that's what he does. So I look at it as I ride on the street 90% of the time and I'll probably go to the track the last 10, you know, so I, I try to bring that aspect into my reviews. Because not, not all of us are going to be taking them to the track on a regular basis. You're just not. Um, so, you know, the V2, the style is cool. You know, I'm glad they updated it. Great. I think uh, for the price, it'll be, a, it'll be a solid bike. And then we go to the new V4 and V4S. As far as this guy, you know, again, upgrade electronics on it. Uh, there's a few other tweaks they did, but... For the most part, it's the same, with the exception of the winglets. <sighs> so when the V4R came out, the winglets were cool because this V4R is, you know, it's a heavy track focused bike. Um, with some of the races that I know that have the V4R, the winglets at speed, and when you go over certain hills and certain racetracks, actually help a lot. And that's that's per you know professional racers but the majority of us would never experience uh, that type of a bike <laughs> they'll never experience you know that pushing it to the edge and actually needing those winglets and aesthetically uh, I don't like them <laughs> and to put them on the S and the to put them on the S model just kind of dejects from how you know hardcore the V4R is so they just kind of they kind of put it there as more as aesthetics as opposed to the functionality that the V4 does granted if you push the V4S to its limits and yeah they'll come in handy but you're never going to do that and to put it on the more run-of-the-mill bike I don't know it's like when when Dodge decided to put the wide body on everything after the demon came out because of the popularity of the wide body it felt like it took away from the uniqueness of that car and tried to put it down to the scat packs and i i didn't understand that is the wide body cool yeah to me the winglets aren't that cool <laughs> but that's that's v4s oh it's not that off uh, uh, so now that I just knocked off my freaking, uh, really dude, uh, fuck, my hip's not up, now I just knocked off my goddamn filter, it's in my hand, I gotta hold it, and ride with the filter in my hand, oh, the joys of motorcycling and vlogging at the same time. <laughs> so anyways, now that I've got way off track, I better drop my fucking, not my damn uh, filter off. And now I'm riding my bike with the filter in my right hand, using only my thumb and index finger to, to steer and throttle control. <laughs> um, we'll go on to the Street Fighter. Now, I like a lot of different style bikes, I do. This is my bread, bread and butter. I love sport bikes. I love this style of race bikes. I like the hard, the hardcoreness of these types of bikes. So let me get that out of the way. But I do enjoy a different style of bikes. I do. And this Street Fighter, I, I like the way it looks. Those winglets, the way that they're shaped, whether they're functional, I don't fucking know, but. The way that they're shaped, I actually really like them. I like the front end. I feel like those headlights are actually going to work. There's not a fucking fairing in the way. Um, the power. I mean, it says like 208 horsepower. Uh, I heard people complaining about it because they didn't feel like naked bikes should have that much power. 
and they're supposed to be a little more relaxed. But that bike is competing against a Tuono. I don't know if you guys understand what a Tuono is, but uh, man, that's a hell of a bike to try to compete with. So I, I get what Ducati's doing, and you know, I like it. Oh, look at that. I actually put, even put it on correctly. <laughs> Without even looking, I put the tab on right. Oh, man. Skills, people. Skills. <laughs> so, the Street Fighter... <laughs> oh, God. Part of my sniffles and coughs and all that crap. I'm actually mild, mildly sick. Uh, kind of getting over it. I'm on the downswing of it, so it should almost be done. Uh, but anyways, the Street Fighter... You know, I think it'll do well. I think people will really migrate towards it. I believe they've been wanting one for a while. You know, I've, I've said this in my past videos and reviews I've done of the monsters. I was never a fan of them. I, I didn't like the way that they steered. I didn't like the position, the seating position of them. It's like you get an idea in your head of something that's a little upright like that and, uh, and the comfortability of it should be at a certain point and I felt like it was just a really bad mix of uncomfortable and aggressive and not enough of the laid back that uh, you would expect for that type of bike so I'm, I'm hoping that this Street Fighter um, kind of tame tailors down tones down the harshness of what a monster like 1200 is and really kind of keeps a lot of the ergonomics of this motorcycle and maybe maybe a little bit better oh my god what are you doing and maybe even a little bit better you know so i'm excited to kind of see what this this uh street fighter is going to be i really do look forward to hopefully being able to test one out and then obviously share that experience with you guys. <clears throat> I know my local motovlogging friend, Mr. Hep520, uh, I think is on the fence about it. I don't want to say he loves it, but I don't, I, I don't have a feel for where he likes it because that is, naked bikes are his thing and he's all hard on about them. So uh, I'd be interested in chat with him and kind of see what he feels about him. On that naked bike rant, uh, this isn't Ducati news, this is actually Kawasaki news. Um, they came out with the ZH2 or Kawasaki H2 Z, whatever you want to fuck call it. <coughs> and that bike um, you know, uses the H2 supercharged motor and stuff like that with the naked frame. So, a uh, naked fairy or naked style bike. There we go. Whew, got it out. Uh, I like the power plant of the H2. I really do. I think putting a supercharger in it is a really cool idea. I believe people will try to take it out of its uh, element by trying to make them drag bikes or trying to make them for anything other than what it is. And once people start doing that, I think they'll ruin it. But in its stock state, the way that it is, I think it's going to be a great bike. I think it'll be solid. I know Hef will give me shit about me putting any positive light to this bike because he thinks I hate him. I don't. I just give him shit because it's easy. <laughs> you know, I I feel like what it'll do, especially because, you know, riding his 800, it's got good low, it's got moderate mid-range. And that H2 engine is going to really just solve those issues entirely and make it uh, a weapon and not even necessarily a weapon just a really great fun bike to ride and probably even daily <laughs> if it's anything like the Z800 as far as how comfortable it is I think it would be a great bike to ride on a regular basis on a daily basis oh, 
all you guys, you're all stupid. Oh man. So that's uh, ZH2. Uh, I will say about the front end of that, it's got awful ugly. I, it's just boxy and weird looking. I, I don't like the front of that bike at all. Anyways, back to Ducati news. I was hoping to run on bail a Super Legera. Uh, they didn't. And I'm kind of glad they didn't because if to talk to some people, it'd be a little early to have a, a Super Legera bike come out because of all the other stuff they have out and the fact that the V4 isn't that old of a bike. So the refinement that goes into a Super Legera hasn't happened yet. So I feel rushed. However, I am hearing that the price tag of one of those is going to be right around 100 grand. <laughs> so, would I be in the market for one right away? Probably not. <laughs> uh, I have 100 grand to spend on other things. So, we'll see. I'm excited to see what they do come out with, though. That's for damn sure. The Super Leger is the pinnacle, and that's, that's something I want. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, kind of the unveilings in a nutshell. Ducati is coming out with a pretty cool line of stuff. Kawasaki's stepping their uh, naked bike game up as well. Just say, you know, it's a great time to be in love with motorcycles. There's some great machines out there. And I hope that you all get to go out, test them out, enjoy them, maybe buy one, and just get on two wheels. There's, there's just so many good things out there that uh, these manufacturers keep coming out with. And the argument of what's faster or what's, what's slower, you know, it's, it is literally comes down to preference almost now. There's a very slight difference in speeds of these bikes nowadays. They're all fast. 198 miles an hour plus on any of these bikes is insane, you know comes down to what you what you as a rider enjoy. Each one of these manufacturers does carry their own sort of traits and characteristics to them and you actually get to tailor it to what you want. So like I said, it's just a great time to uh, be in love with motorcycling. So <clears throat> with that, I'm going to stop talking and try to get my throat to stop tickling. <coughs> God, I'm just dying. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go get tires on my fucking bike because my rear tire is about to show cord. So, with that, you all have a good one. Uh, hopefully, I get this video up in a timely fashion. We'll see. My school schedule has been kind of rough this week. But uh, that's life. You all have a good one. I'm out.